July 20th, Daily Video Bible Reading from the Net Bible, Ezra chapters 9 and 10 from the Old Testament. Now when these things had been completed, the leaders approached me and said, The people of Israel, the priests, and the Levites have not separated themselves from the local residents, who practice detestable things similar to those of the Canaanites, the Hittites, the Perizzites, the Jebusites, the Ammonites, the Moabites, the Egyptians, and the Amorites. Indeed, they have taken some of their daughters as wives for themselves and for their sons, so that the holy race had become intermingled with the local residents. Worse still, the leaders and the officials have been at the forefront of all of this. When I heard this report, I tore my tunic and my robe and ripped out some of the hair from my head and beard. Then I sat down quite devastated. Everyone who held the words of the God of Israel in awe gathered around me because of the unfaithful acts of the people of the exile. Devastated, I continued to sit there until the evening offering. At the time of the evening offering, I got up from my self-abasement with my tunic and robe torn and then dropped to my knees and spread my hands to the Lord my God. I prayed, Oh my God, I am ashamed and embarrassed to lift my face to you, my God. For our iniquities have climbed higher than our heads and our guilt extends to the heavens. From the days of our fathers until this very day, our guilt has been great. Because of our iniquities, we, along with our kings and priests, have been delivered over by the local kings to sword, captivity, plunder, and embarrassment right up to the present time. But now briefly, we have received mercy from the Lord our God in that he has left us a remnant and has given us a secure position in his holy place. Thus our God has enlightened our eyes and has given us a little relief in our time of servitude. Although we are slaves, our God has not abandoned us in our servitude. He has extended kindness to us in the sight of the kings of Persia, in that he has received us to restore the temple of our God and to raise up its ruins and to give us a protective wall in Judah and Jerusalem. And now what are we able to say after this, our God? For we have forsaken your commandments, which you commanded us through your servants, the prophets, with these words. The land that you are entering to possess is a land defiled by the impurities of the local residents. With their abominations, they have filled it from one end to the other with their filthiness. Therefore, do not give your daughters in marriage to their sons, and do not take their daughters in marriage for your sons. Do not ever seek their peace or welfare, so that you may be strong and may eat the good of the land, and may leave it as an inheritance for your children forever. Everything that has happened to us has come about because of our wicked actions and our great guilt. Even so, our God, you have exercised restraint toward our iniquities and have given us a remnant such as this. Shall we once again break your commandments and intermarry with these abominable people? Would you not be so angered by us that you would wipe us out with no survivor or remnant? O Lord God of Israel, you are righteous, for we are left as a remnant this day. Indeed, we stand before you in our guilt. However, because of this guilt, no one can really stand before you. While Ezra was praying and confessing, weeping and throwing himself to the ground before the temple of God, a very large crowd of Israelites, men, women, and children alike gathered around him. The people wept loudly. Then Shechaniah, son of Jehiel, from the descendants of Elam, addressed Ezra. We have been unfaithful to our God by marrying foreign women from the local peoples. Nonetheless, there is still hope for Israel in this regard. Therefore, let us enact a covenant with our God to send away all these women and their offspring in keeping with your counsel, my Lord, and that of those who respect the commandments of our God, and let it be done according to the law. Get up, for this matter concerns you. We are with you, so be strong and act decisively. So Ezra got up and made the leading priest and Levites and all Israel take an oath to carry out this plan, and they all took a solemn oath. Then Ezra got up from in front of the temple of God and went to the room of Jehohanan, son of Eliashib. While he stayed there, he did not eat food or drink water, 
for he was in mourning over the infidelity of the exiles. A proclamation was circulated throughout Judah and Jerusalem that all the exiles were to be assembled in Jerusalem. Everyone who did not come within three days would thereby forfeit all his property in keeping with the counsel of the officials and the elders. Furthermore, he himself would be excluded from the assembly of the exiles. All the men of Judah and Benjamin were gathered in Jerusalem within the three days. It was in the ninth month, on the twentieth day of that month. All the people sat in the square at the temple of God, trembling because of this matter and because of the rains. Then Ezra the priest stood up and said to them, You have behaved in an unfaithful manner by taking foreign wives. This has contributed to the guilt of Israel. Now give praise to the Lord God of your fathers and do his will. Separate yourselves from the local residents and from these foreign wives. All the assembly replied in a loud voice, We will do just as you have said. However, the people are numerous and it is the rainy season. We are unable to stand here outside. Furthermore, this business cannot be resolved in a day or two, for we have sinned greatly in this matter. Let our leaders take steps on behalf of all the assembly. Let all those in our towns who have married foreign women come at an appointed time, and with them the elders of each town and its judges, until the hot anger of our God is turned away from us in this matter. Only Jonathan, son of Asahel, and Josiah of Tikvah were against this, assisted by Meshulam and Shabbatai, the Levite. So the exiles proceeded accordingly. Ezra the priest separated out by name men who were leaders in their family groups. They sat down to consider this matter on the first day of the tenth month, and on the first day of the first month they finished considering all the men who had married foreign wives. It was determined that from the descendants of the priests, the following had taken foreign wives. From the descendants of Jeshua, son of Josadak, and his brothers, Maaseah, Eliezer, Jerob, and Gedaliah. They gave their word to send away their wives. Their guilt offering was a ram from the flock for their guilt. From the descendants of Immer, Hanani, and Zebediah. From the descendants of Haram, Maaseah, Elijah, Shemaiah, Jehiel, and Uzziah. From the descendants of Pasher, Elioenai, Maaseah, Ishmael, Nathanael, Josabad, and Elisa. From the Levites, Josabad, Shimei, Kalea, also known as Kalita, Pethahiah, Judah, and Eliezer. From the singers, Eliashib. From the gatekeepers, Shalom, Telam, and Yorai. From the Israelites, from the descendants of Parosh, Ramiah, Iziah, Malchijah, Mijamin, Eliezer, Malchijah, and Benaiah. From the descendants of Elam, Mataniah, Zechariah, Jehiel, Abdi, Jeremoth, and Elijah. From the descendants of Zatu, Elioenai, Eliashib, Mataniah, Jeremoth, Zabad, and Aziza. From the descendants of Bebai, Jehohanan, Hananiah, Zabai, and Athli. From the descendants of Bani, Meshulam, Malak, Adea, Jashub, Sheel, and Jeremoth. From the descendants of Pehath Moab, Adna, Kelal, Benea, Maasea, Mataniah, Bezalel, Binuai, and Manasseh. From the descendants of Haram, Eliezer, Ishijah, Malchijah, Shemaiah, Shimeon, Benjamin, Malak, and Shemariah. From the descendants of Hashem, Mataniah, Matata, Zabad, Eliphalai, Jeremiah, Manasseh, and Shimei. From the descendants of Bani, Maadai, Amram, Yule, 
Benaya, Bedaya, Kaluhai, Benaya, Miramoth, Eliashib, Mataniah, Matani, and Jaisah. From the descendants of Binuai, Shimei, Shelemiah, Nathan, Adaya, Machnadibai, Sheshai, Sherai, Azarel, Shelemiah, Shemariah, Shalom, Amariah, and Joseph. From the descendants of Nebo, Jael, Mattathiah, Zabad, Zabina, Jedai, Joel, and Benaiah. All these had taken foreign wives, and some of them also had children by these women. God, in this in this section, when Ezra is talking about intermarry and marrying and what they're going to do with these foreign wives and some of the children, it really touches my heart because right now I'm in a in a situation where I'm having to make a decision about my future, and it's really fascinating to watch my previous life and how I chose which guys I would go out with or become serious with and it was based on a lot of things not just the lust part of it but it was also based on you know were they intelligent were they kind were they nice were they thoughtful uh, maybe even throw in once in a while did they go to church but my desire for a mate that would be for the rest of my life here on earth wasn't anywhere close to the standards that you have actually set for Christian marriages and Christian relationships. And I think about that as I'm reading this uh, part in Ezra where you were really clear with them about who you expected them to take as wives. And that was because the people outside of your chosen remnant, your chosen people, worshipped gods and idols that obviously weren't you. And so that effect on them. So you were protecting them. Um, you were taking care of them throughout their life so that they could grow in a rich relationship with you. And it's interesting because you've called us currently to the exact same opportunity. That if you give us a gift of being single, that's crazy awesome. And I think a lot of people don't realize just how amazing and powerful that is. And some of some people you've called to be married to have somebody in his life that helps grow your kingdom but yet i still see even christians picking their potential lifetime mate for all the wrong reasons um, maybe they say oh he's a man of god he reads his bible he goes to church but is that truly enough for what you have expected of us to have this rich growing relationship with you for the rest of our lives well I can't speak for men because I'm not one, but I can speak for women and we have to be incredibly careful about who we pick as a lifetime partner. If you've given us that gift of a man in our life to be that because he's head of the household, he's the one who is responsible in that whole household for not only my uh, spiritual path I walk, but also our children. If if the household's going to have children and yet I watch so many women pick their husbands based upon other attractions other attributes that are a little bit more or a lot more worldly than the things that you've called us to if I pick the right husband which is actually picking the one that you've picked for me if I pick the right husband my life will be rich in my relationship with you it doesn't mean that things will be easier by any stretch of the imagination we will have you in the midst of that relationship which is vitally important but it's not just enough that both of us are Christians and we go to church there has to be on so many different levels this responsibility of what our relationship looks like independently and then what that relationship looks like in the structure of a Christian household and I think too often we take this lightly and we get in these situations like what Ezra is talking about where 
we didn't consider all of the ramifications of allowing that person into our life, allowing that person to dilute us away from you, God, uh, to distract us, to not support, to not encourage, to not get excited over our ministries and our missions. And instead, we're stuck in this frustration, this marriage for the rest of our lives. Now, I know full well that you can change people's hearts and you can do amazing things within those relationships. But first and foremost, you have been really clear with us about being equally yoked with someone. Just like you were in this situation. These, were supposed, these people were supposed to be equally yoked with people from their own communities, not, from, not with foreign wives. God, I thank you and praise you that you always want what is best for us. That if you are going to give us a relationship, it is to first and foremost glorify you and help your kingdom. It's kind of nice that you throw love in there and affection and companionship. But first and foremost, it has to glorify you. And our choices need to be as considered and thoughtful as if we were picking our churches, which are incredibly important, the pastors that we listen to, the books we read, that family is just as important. That head of the household is just as important. God, thank you for always wanting what's, what is best for us, for always seeking a richer relationship with us and setting up guidelines and rules and laws and commandments so that we can experience this incredible life with you. In your son's name I pray. Amen. <music>